Hi, we've been having some unusual weather. For the last two mornings, we've had wall-to-wall -wall blue sky. And for the UK in the Midlands, that's very, very unusual. And the forecast is more tomorrow. So it's clouded over now, it's midday, but that lovely sunshine just had to come out and try and make use of the, the pro capture for birds in flight. So it's very simple. We just have one feeder, taking all the other feeders away. So just one source of food, one perch. I don't want them on the perch. Just want somewhere for them to launch into flight. And notice they've got to go slightly uphill to get to the feeder. And that means they're going to have to open the wings to get lift off. It's amazing how far birds can move with just a hop. One short beat of the wing and they sort of float across with the wings actually closed. So you want them to go uphill a little bit. For the Pro Capture, I've been using the OM1 camera body with the 40 to 150 mil zoom, 2.8 zoom. Very important that I'm using a zoom because birds are different sizes. The great tit and the nuthatch is considerably bigger than the blue tit. So when I've got this situation with a bird leaving a branch and flying to the feeder, if it's a great tit, I've got to zoom out a little bit. And if a blue tit lands, then I've got to zoom in. They're two very different sizes. It's not a lens that I get to use very often, but in this situation, I can be as close as I want to to the birds. So I don't really need much pulling power. And optically, it's a very good lens. I'm working from a small wooden hide and note the netting. This is called clear view netting, which you can buy off eBay and Amazon. And the birds can't see in through the netting, but you can see out through it very clearly. Just to emphasize, we need this height difference. The feeder has to be slightly higher up. This blue tit, this is taking 120 frames per second with the probe capture. And look, his wings just don't open for ages. I wasn't normally using 120 frames per second because it doesn't continuously autofocus, but that was just a, a demonstration. Now here, I've got continuous focus going, so I'm restricted to 50 frames per second. For these blue tits, shutter speed, I was aiming for around 5 thousandths of a second. Now my starting point for birds in flight is 2,500th, but when you're working with small birds like these with very rapid wing beats that these goldfinches have, you really benefit from a faster shutter speed. And great tits as well. You'll notice the background will keep changing. Sometimes I've got some trees in the background and sometimes just blue sky. Don't get many green finches coming these days. But these pictures are taken over four different mornings. And I like doing things like this when I'm working on a project for a while. Long tail tits. The nuthatch didn't give me very many opportunities, but on one occasion it went down quite low on the branch and then flew up. Without the pro capture, I don't think I'd have stood any chance of getting this picture. We're back again. This is the fourth morning, although I had to have a day off yesterday because the weather forecast was terrible. It was strong winds, heavy rain, so I didn't come yesterday. But this is the fourth morning I've been to do a very similar picture. On the previous mornings, I concentrated on doing the birds as they left the perch they were on to fly across to the feeder. And that's a, a variation that I wanted. But usually your best pictures are as the bird lands on the feeder. You don't want the bird as it leaves the feeder because then it's going to have a sunflower seed or a peanut in its bill. That doesn't look very natural. But if you can do them as they're landing, they've got an empty bill and they have to break and they break by spreading the wings out. So you often get the best wing positions as the birds are landing but somehow you've got to sort of control where they're landing and I've demonstrated this before on YouTube and what I did before is I had a plastic lid off a, a circular uh, container and because it was plastic I had to get a soldering iron and I made a hole in the middle of that lid and I used to put it over this uh, normal seed feeder. Now that lid I've stored it in a very safe and secure place and I've had it for years Unfortunately, I can't, rem can't remember where that secure place is. So I've made one out of cardboard today. So all I've done is got a bit of cardboard, A4, cut a hole in it. That goes over my seed feeder. And then we're just gonna position that at that sort of angle. 
there's some seed there just at the end of it and the birds are going to come and land on there and the idea of this bit of cardboard is they can't come in at an angle they can't come round the back they've got to fly in this way and because I've never seen this before initially they hesitate a little bit they will actually hover in front of that feeder that's the theory and it works I've done it many times so we have a, a Wimberley plump which is very useful quite expensive but very useful and we're going to use this to hold the seed feeder in place yeah, nice little platform very quick and now we just balance this tip the seed so the seeds are at the end here in fact I think I want it just to tilt yeah don't want the seeds falling out and that's it the birds are gonna hover here are guaranteed so notice as this bird comes in he hesitates be it only for a, a very short period of time and this is in slow motion but it was when he was hesitating there when he was just hovering that's when you're gonna get your pictures but also that bit of cardboard forces them to come in at a right angle they don't tend to come in at 45 degrees which makes it more awkward to photograph them they come in in a straight line A regular problem I get with mirrorless cameras is they refuse to autofocus when the, the branch that I'm trying to photograph these birds leaving is completely out of focus because the focus has jumped onto the background. It won't recognize it and it won't start to autofocus on it because it's so far out of focus. This happens on every camera that I've owned that's mirrorless. In the initial cameras I was messing with Panasonic GH2 and GH3 it was so bad it really made them unusable it's not that bad with the om1 it usually does pick up that branch but sometimes it doesn't various ways around it because i've got a clutch on this lens the 40 to 150 i can just pull the focusing ring back i'm now in manual focus so i can manually focus on it then push the focusing ring forward and then it will auto focus the other thing you can do is tilt the lens down so you're pointing at the floor at about the same distance as where the branch is. It will focus on the floor, then you can raise the camera up again. That's very time consuming. The easiest way to do it is just to touch the screen, the rear screen. Where that perch is, you just touch it and straight away it auto focuses on it. So that's the way I normally get around it. Pro Capture is a fantastic feature. Normally I use it at SH2 Pro Capture, which means I get about 50 frames per second, but the continuous focus works all the time. And whereas I used to put a lot of thought into how many frames I should have before and after I press the button, I really don't anymore. I haven't changed the settings for a long time. So long as I've got half a second of pictures before I press the button, that's usually enough and half a second is 25 frames. There are other ways that I could have stopped the camera from focusing onto the background. I could have used the focus limiter built into the camera. Now we've had focus limiters on telephoto lenses for well, at least one decade. I'd, I'd imagine it's two decades by now. So I think every telephoto lens has this. This one has a, a three-way switch here. I can focus between 1.3 meters, the minimum focus, to infinity, or I can restrict it from 1.3 meters up to six meters, or the third option, six meters to infinity. I have never used this feature as far as I can remember on my Canon cameras, Sony camera or the Olympus. It's just totally inappropriate numbers. They're just not useful measurements to, to focus within. But with the Olympus or OM cameras, you can set the focus limiter to whatever distance you want, a minimum and a maximum. So in next week's YouTube film, we'll talk about how you set that up.